Hello, I'm Marcelo and on this tutorial we will learn how to schedule our automations with YPath orchestrator triggers. So let's get started. So the triggers is a component that allows to schedule the automatic execution of automations. So now we are on the demos folder. So to access the triggers page, we can click here or go to automations and triggers. So here we can see that we have uh, three uh, apps. So time triggers, queue triggers, and event triggers. So these are the trigger types that are available at least at the moment that I'm recording this lecture. So the time trigger, as the name suggests, is a trigger based on time. So on a time trigger, we can scale automatic execution of a process based on time interval or specific times. Uh, the queue trigger is a trigger based on queues. So we'll see more about queues on the next uh, section. But the queue, it's basically, uh, we can imagine the queue as a component that can hold, store, and limited amount of items. And we can interpret these items as tasks. So we send the item to the queue, it has the status new. And then uh, we can have a robot that consumes uh, the tasks to be processed that are on the queue. And so basically with queue triggers, we can uh, scale automatic execution of process based on queue items that are added to a specific queue. Uh, this will make more sense on the next section. And then we have the event triggers. So these are triggers based on events of applications like Google Drive. So let's say that we want to trigger a process when it's uploaded a new file on a specific folder of our Google Drive account. So we can do that. We can create a trigger that is based on this event. And when happens the event, it starts a job of the process. It could be Google Drive, OneDrive, Salesforce. So there are many, many options here for this trigger type. So let's keep it simple and let's create a time trigger. So here on time triggers, let's click on add a new trigger. So first we have to define the trigger name. So let's give the name trigger. So now here on process name, we have to indicate the process that must be started by this trigger. So let's select the logs to the web process. Then we can define the default job priority. Let's leave inherited from the process. Then here also we can specify uh, if we want a specific account and specific machine that should run the process. So let's leave any, so any machine and any robot user can run the process. Now here, uh, very important, so here we indicate basically when we want to run the process. So if we want to run every minute, every five minutes, 10, hourly, so to run every hour, daily, so every day at a specific hour, weekly, so here we can choose the days where we want to run and hours, monthly, and then on Bansett, we have to use a cron expression that basically it's a expression where we indicate at each times the process should be executed. So let's use the minutes option. So every minute, so we can test it easily and see it working. Then here we have also the option of non-working days restrictions. So if we have created a calendar or with the non-working days, so we could here um, select a calendar and basically on the non-working days, the process won't run. So that's it basically. So let's add the trigger. And as you can see, automatically the trigger is enabled. So when it appears here, this icon with the green color, that means that it's enabled. And so we are over here and we can see it says enabled. Here we can see uh, the details, so it runs every minute and the next runtime in 40 seconds, now 39 seconds. So let's just wait a bit to see if it really starts a job of our logs to the web process. So it's about to start, so in four seconds, one second and it will start. So now if you go to jobs, here we can see that we started the job 
uh, four seconds ago and it already ended so that means that the trigger is working and starting our process so now how we can disable the trigger so to disable it's really simple we just have to click here on the checkbox for the trigger and click on this button to disable and so the trigger is now disabled and will not start the process every minute and to enable it again it's the same thing so now we have to click here and we can enable to edit the trigger uh, we just have to click here and click on edit and we can change here uh, the settings and we can change here the configuration of our triggers so let's say that we want the trigger to run the process every five minutes update and now the trigger was updated then to delete the trigger it's really simple so we can delete all shit from here or just click here and then click on this button and the trigger was deleted so now let's just add it back again so trigger logs select the process and now here every minute and let's have and so we have added the trigger again then another small detail we can see which jobs were started by this trigger so if we click here and click on view jobs we can see that no job was started by this trigger and it's true because we have deleted the previous trigger that started the job and this one it's a new one so if we wait now uh, some more seconds it will start a new job so it will start so as we can see the job was started and now if we go here view jobs we can see that this trigger started a job and that's it for this tutorial and if you want to learn more about why path orchestrator i have a course on udemy that teaches about the platform from the basics to more advanced topics so we get started by learning the basics like understand what are tenants folders, machines, robots, and more. And also how we can manage these key components of YPath Orchestrator. Also we learn about automations management from publishing and automation to schedule its execution on YPath Orchestrator. Also we learn about monitorization, how we can monitor our robots, our automations in different ways, how to use the YPath Orchestrator API and much more. So if you are interested, you can find on the description of this tutorial the link to the course page so you can check out the details and else if you want, you can enroll on the course. So that's it and I'll see you on the next tutorial.